Hey there folks, just done a rather significant merge, so I thought it was about time I threw another video your way. Um, so as of now, uh, the branches that I've been working on for the last for like four or five months or something um, have been merged into master, and so they're all fully available and kind of ready to play with. Uh, there are a lot of changes, it's just like the, the way we're dealing with uh, composing functionality into shaders has completely changed, and in my mind it's simplified a great deal. Um, and I kind of wanted to give you a kind of tour of that and the kind of things that are going on. So as of now, um, I'm saying Kepler is, in, is fully in alpha, so it's gone from horrendous software to merely incredibly buggy. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm not going to be able to cover everything. That'll be something for another video, but let's just uh, have a look at what we've got here. So on this side, we have uh, this a little ray marcher that's being used in this effect here. And the... Vertex and fragment shaders are here. Notice that they're both just uh, functions. They are anything ending in G is related to Keppel. Um, so you'll see defun G, and this is defining functionality that runs on the GPU. And here is the fragment shader, which is, again, not the only function that's involved. You can see that these other functions up here, like thing2 and OK and box and sphere, and these are not all being used at the moment. Currently we're using this OK function, and it's making this shape. Um, notice how it doesn't have to be specified in any different way to the uh, functions we're using as the shader stages. It's how they're used in, in what context that defines what they're going to be used for. So to take GPU functions and turn them into something we can actually push data through and render to the screen, we create a pipeline. So here's Dev Pipeline, here's its name, um, and here is this gpipe uh, syntax. And it says we're going to pipe the data through first this function and then this function. Now in this context, this means that they could, this one is going to be used as the vertex shader and this one as the fragment shader. That's not taken from the names, that's based on position. You can also specify them in a kind of uh, keyword argument kind of way. But there's no really real reason to do that with only two because there has to be a fragment shader and there has to be a vertex shader. Sorry, vertex shader. It has to be a... Uh, yeah, vertex and fragment shader, just in the wrong order, um, to render this stuff anyway. So we have this. And these other functions are being used by these functions. So they just get included um, in the code. So we can then do things like, and this is going to be fairly large, we can say pull g, this is different from gl pull we used to have before, um, and then say the ray marcher. And there we can see the whole source code for um, first the vertex shader, and then the fragment shader. And you'll notice that here is the, whoops, is the OK function, um, and it's been included. And only the functions you actually use are included, so you don't have these big bloated uh, shaders. This also means you can reuse them quite nicely as well, which is great. Um, one thing this doesn't show is how we would then, so we know how to compose functions, but I haven't shown here is how to compose these pipelines together. And so I thought I would, I would show you something quickly that does that. So I'm going to call stop loop here, and I'm going to switch out to this, which is the bloom shader. Oops. Not run D, run loop. And as you can see, we have a simple scene here. So what this actually is is one texture. It's completely flat, uh, two triangles. And I'm going to slow this down because it's going to get a little irritating at that speed. Oops, I've sped it up. Good plan. Right, okay. This is a post-process effect that's being run on this texture, and it gives this kind of bloom thing. And the way it does it is it renders... I'm going to switch over to the stylus quickly. We have a few uh, pipelines. Let's go up to the top. And they all use the same uh, vertex shader, which is a simple pass through. So hit C here, we're able to really kind of reuse this code. We don't have to have this stuff a few times. And, but they all have different fragment shaders. So this simple one here is just another kind of pass through fragment shader. It just grabs the texture color. And so we're rendering to the texture to four different frame buffer objects with uh, shaders attached, with, with shaders attached to them, with textures attached to them. So we're rendering them these four times into increasingly small textures. And that's getting uh, basically downsampled in quite an ugly way. And then we're running this simple blur kernel here, 
Um, let's remove the others. This symbol for kernel is being run eight times. Uh, once uh, blurring horizontally, sorry, yeah, four times blurring horizontally for each of the uh, four shrunk textures, and four times vertically. And then finally, we call the combine shader, which again combines these all together with a scaling factor, which is what we're animating with a sine wave here. Notice that this is very small considering we're doing eight passes, and these are all the definitions for the frame buffer objects. We have this syntax. Um, in dev pipeline, which means that if you've got some frame buffer objects that are basically bound to this um, this pipeline, they're not going to be used anywhere else, then we just let you define them here. And so what's happening is we're saying the uh, stream is getting pushed through blit, and that's rendering into this frame buffer. And again, this renders into this frame buffer. And then we get to use these later on, so we can look at the attachments of the frame buffer. Don't worry if none of this syntax is especially clear at the moment. It's um, GL terminology, and it is kind of fairly standard. So we can then take render into one frame buffer object and then use it as a texture later on in later passes. And uh, Def Pipeline also does a fair bit of work to basically minimize the number of arguments you have to write up here. Because once you start including you know, like 12 passes with 10 different shaders. The number of arguments, just writing them, feels clumsy. And it knows what they will are because you defined them up here, so it pulls them in for you. And uh, you'll just have them immediately set. And you can also overload them yourself. So what we're doing here is overloading the defaults. But yes, this will be explained in other videos. Basically, there's been, there's been a lot of progress, and I, I am going to have to show a good few, number of these things. And... Um, it's getting to the point where we can do some tutorials on it that shouldn't change too much over the next year or so. Uh, there's definitely going to be API changes, and what's one of the big things is the API is in the kind of accretion stage at the moment, uh, which means we've got a lot of things in here that shouldn't be, but they're kind of necessary to do the examples and get the API into a better state. So things like meshes don't need to be here. Um, in fact, they don't feel like they belong to Kevl in any way, and they should be spun out. Again, with the model loading code, we use ClassImp, which is its own library, but the Kevl helpers should be spun out as well. Um, we've also got a lot of things to add. Um, I've got most of the code in place to handle blending modes, if you know what those are, for, again, again, combining colors as you're rendering into frame buffer objects. Um, we need better uh, GL state control. Uh, that's coming. Um, we've had some ideas that should be able to make it incredibly fast as well. Optimization uh, hasn't been a focus up till now, even though it's running okay. Um, but the good news is there is there, there are quite simply tons of places in this that we're going to be able to optimize with no visible change on the surface. And also very simple ways of um, informing Keppel um, of certain information that will allow it to make things incredibly fast. So I'm, I'm pretty confident we're going to be able to get speed without losing any of the readability. And I'm pretty stoked on that. Also, we're going to have to remove stuff. Um, as what we have kind of uh, solidifies, there'll be little details that will be uh, removed here and there. Like I say, things spun out into their own libraries. OSX support. I have not had any luck getting this to work in a way that feels good. Um, I really could do with some help on this. So if anyone uses OSX and is good with um, this, especially if you've done some stuff with SDL before, really need your help. I'm uh, pretty confused at this stage. <laughs> I've had some great people try and explain it to me before, but I'm getting pretty stuck. So um, yeah, give me a yell anyway. Okay, uh, is there anything else to show? Oh yeah, we've got cube maps as well. Uh, may as well show that one here. Let's load up the cube map. Uh, loading these textures now is incredibly simple. Let's just stop the other one. Um, we're uh, passing in these six um, paths, and this is the function. So we're doing with C arrays, um, and we're kind of making, again, just takes a, a list of, it's going to basically, yeah, it's a list of C arrays that it will free outside of this block. Then we just say make texture, passing in a list of C arrays, and we just say we want a cube map. And uh, we will get a cube texture. And so let's just run it and see what the effect is. Oh, run loop, not run demo. Oh, I, I'm an idiot. I didn't, uh, didn't recompile. So let's compile this stuff. Okay. 
took a couple of seconds while all the textures were loaded. They're like 2048 by 2048. And as you can see, now we've got what looks like a really nice 3D scene. It's quite simply a cube map texture being used in a way. This is what a lot of the backgrounds in games actually are, is these kind of billboardy, um, yeah, very, very low poly kind of billboards or cubes uh, with texture slapped on them in a good way. So yeah, this is what we've got. Right, I'm actually going to leave it here so I don't drone on for another half an hour. And um, I'll try and come back with some tutorials and some new stuff soon. Yell in the comments what you want to see, and uh, I'll try and give you that information.